Hi, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. As a guy who grows many thousands of roses a year, I'm often asked the question, could you take a bouquet like this of roses that you've received for Valentine's Day or Mother's Day, take cuttings from the stems and have those root and grow a rose of your own? The short answer is yes, although it's not as easy to do it off of a bouquet like this because of the way they're grown and treated and handled as cut flowers as it would be from a shrub in your yard. But if you're interested in the hobby of plant propagation and want to give it a try, it's a great way to get some practice. I've pulled these out of the water now to get you a closer look. But the first thing I'm going to show you is how these stems are very much like the ones I take cuttings of uh, from my mother plants in the yard here in that the firmness of the stem is in this stage where it's still a little bit soft uh, and bendable but not so soft that it can bend right on in itself or so firm that it feels like it would snap. The first thing you're going to have to learn about this is where you have the nodes. If you look along the stem here you can see where this leaf comes out. That's a node and they have stripped the leaves off this lower portion of the stem. I'm gonna give you some close-ups here so you can see that that leaves behind it a leaf scar with a bud on it. You wanna take your first cut at the bottom of this cutting below one of those nodes. And I'm gonna give you a, a quick look here of my first cut, but let's say I took the cut below this node here and there you go. And then I'm gonna give it a section that looks like this. Something that is something in the range of six or seven inches long. Uh, bottom does not have leaves on it because they already stripped it, but it has a couple of nodes down here. And then across the top here, it has a couple of leaves. Getting a closer up look at the stems here, uh, you may wonder, isn't it a waste to cut off this bottom portion of the stem here? Well, the thing is, I actually want to have some of these leaves at the top here. Having leaves on your cuttings actually encourages them to root. So I am gonna sacrifice the bottom end of this stem to go ahead and get the cuttings. You can see it has a node here and a node here. So I'm just gonna cut just directly below that bottom node and cut above one of the sets of leaves. And that should be a valid cutting here. And this brings me to the topic of that I'm going to actually trim off some of the leaves here. Uh, just so it doesn't lose its moisture so quickly. So trimming off some of the leaves reduces the surface area and means it could be a more viable cutting and this section is just going to waste as is the flower, which of course uh, I wouldn't attempt this uh, generally until I see the flowers starting to fade, probably fading a little bit more than this. Which brings me to the topic of why it is that you have such a worse chance of taking cuttings off of these stems that came from cut flowers than you would from your landscape. And it has to do with the conditions they get during growth and initial handling as cut flowers. As a, as a cut flower variety, they're probably growing in a greenhouse in South America under warm, warm temperatures and then imported. At least they would be in my market. So they're grown under very different conditions there. So uh, that's number one, is that they're grown fast and soft and that can reduce their viability as cuttings. I can already feel on this one here, it's kinking or too soft and I probably won't even use that cutting just because it was grown too soft and it isn't going to hold under the propagation. Uh, meanwhile this one here it's not kinking like that it's a little firmer so I'm going to go ahead and use it. I'm cutting above a leaf there or but above a leaf node and then following down the cutting here I'm going to cut it just below uh, this node here where there was a leaf scar. Uh, the other reason is because it has been some time between the cutting of these and shipping them in from South America to come to North America and uh, sitting on a, a supermarket shelf and so on, that that time counts against you. And once again, this one here, as soon as I pressed here, it buckled. It's just too soft of growth uh, to use as a cutting. So I'm not gonna use that one. With these cuttings now cut to the right length, with a little bit of foliage left on the top and cut just below a node at the bottom, they're ready for sticking. I'm first going to dip them into some rooting hormone. If you're picking up the rooting hormone powder, it's a talc-based powder with 0.3% or 0.4% IBA I usually use for semi-hardwood cuttings on roses. The brand on that, I use Stimroot number two, or there's an equivalent in the States called uh, Hormodin. Uh, and once again, I'm just dipping that, the bottom, tapping it off. You don't need a whole ton of rooting hormone on there. And then just placing it into the potting soil, only up to the depth that it takes to support it. And then I'm just leaving it right there. You don't have to push it way down deep into the tray or into the pot, just enough to support it at a reasonable level. Uh, now the soil I'm using is just in, 
a composted bark mulch, but you could use any kind of a potting mix, a uh, uh, well-drained potting mix like uh, peat and perlite or uh, cocoa peat also works. Uh, the other thing I'll say about this is that in the end, I ended up out of a bouquet of 12 roses. Uh, four of them were just too soft when I did that bend test. They, they buckled right away, and so I excluded those ones, and I've gone ahead with eight cuttings. You see the procedure's the same all the way around. Uh, finish up here, and I'll just say that in this tray uh, that I'm using, uh, obviously there's an empty space. I'll be using that for other cuttings. I'll fill up the, uh, the tray, and then I'll get it under the humidity dome. The humidity dome I'm using is just an inverted storage bin and you can see, I'll stick a, a, the lid on here, that I've just gone ahead and drilled some holes for ventilation and then I take that uh, storage bin and I place it over top of the tray. This is a handy thing if you're doing a large number of cuttings, but you can certainly do the same thing if you were doing this uh, in a pot. You don't have to use individual pots like that. You could stick six cuttings into a pot and cover it either with a pop bottle open on the top or a milk jug uh, open on the top as well. As for location, I've moved it indoors here with some of my other cuttings and seedlings to get a constant temperature of somewhere around 20 degrees Celsius or maybe 68 degrees Fahrenheit is around the equivalent. So room temperatures are fine. And uh, I have it in bright indirect light. I also actually in this room have some supplemental lighting, some LEDs, but that's not completely necessary for those early stages of rooting. So if you had a spot beside a bright window, that would be fine. If you were doing it outdoors, you might have to put it in some shade so it doesn't actually cook inside that humidity dome uh, so I like the indoor temperatures just because they're so much more stable okay it's been exactly three weeks since I stuck these as cuttings see there's some condensation on the inside of the bin here and that's ex exactly all that I did was just open it up every couple of days and spritz the inside with some water just to make sure it stays moist enough and the cuttings won't dry out and as you can see I did fill the rest of the tray with other cuttings but what I can see here that's most important is that we have some development of roots on these ones. As I pull on it, I can feel it pulling back, which means that there's some rooting. And in fact, I cheated ahead here and pulled a couple out of their pots right away just to see how they're doing. And you get some close up views there. I'll pull that closer to the camera so you can see that that is beautiful new rooting, but it's also got some nice callusing. It's nice to see the uh, early stages of root development across the bases of the cuttings there. Let's pull one out right in front of the camera just so you can see how it's rooting into the pot. I'm going to pull one more out of the pot here and you can see that here you are, you're rooted all the way to the side and almost to the bottom with some of these bigger roots getting down there. So eight out of eight is my results uh, from that bouquet and eight is all I took because the other four had those bendy stems that just weren't suitable for cuttings. All right, if you have any questions about how to propagate roses, uh, in general, or from a bouquet, just go ahead and drop those in the comments below the video. I'll see what I can do to help.